Right now, the day's biggest news stories from a Vegas perspective. This is the Vegas Take with Sharp and Shapiro. What's up, Las Vegas? Happy hump day, baby. Yeah, that's right. It is Wednesday. Glad you could join us on the Vegas Take Sharp and Shapiro. Boy, do we have a loaded show lined up for you today. A lot to get to, a lot to go over. Of course, we just had the New Hampshire primary yesterday. We'll get to that here in just a minute. Tulsi Gabbard saying some really weird things over the course of the last couple days, one of which involves prostitution and heroin. I'll explain what that means coming up here at the bottom of the hour. Hour number two, this is going to be a lot of fun. I met this guy at a Veterans in Politics charity dinner uh, the other night. His name is Sam Peters. He's running for Congress as a Republican for Nevada District 4. And obviously, he wants to beat Stephen Horsford. Now, he, as you know, I'm a middle-of-the-road kind of guy. And he's, I, I think it's fair to say, uh, an extreme case to the right. So we're probably going to get into some good debates, some good discussion. Some things I'll probably agree with him on. But I'm sure there'll be plenty of things I will disagree. But it'll certainly be a lively debate. I promise you that. So Sam Peters, a man who's running for Congress as a Republican, will be joining us in studio. Hour number two. Really looking forward to that. Hour number three. This is going to be really interesting. So we know about this Houston Astros story, stealing signs, maybe even possibly using devices to know exactly what type of pitch and the location of the pitch it's coming from in the playoffs. And it's this huge Huge, huge debacle Major League Baseball is facing. A lot of managers have been fired. No accountability with the players yet, though. Well, guess what? There's a pitcher by the name of Mike Bolsinger. And Bolsinger is suing the Houston Astros. He's a pitcher in Major League Baseball. His lawyer is going to be coming on our show coming up in hour number three. His name is Ben Messalis. So what type of precedence does this send? Does that mean every single pitcher that faced the Houston Astros might have a case to sue the organization? You might be surprised what my opinion is on this. We'll get to that coming up in hour number three. And you might have heard, speaking of the New Hampshire primary in hour number three, you might have heard that Andrew Yang dropped out. There are a couple people that dropped out yesterday, and even though some are not making it official yet, my opinion on that is this. Many of them have have absolutely no chance, no chance of winning. And and they all should drop out, and we'll get to that in a minute. But Andrew Yang dropped out, and he is one of those guys that has had a lot of support from the gambling community, particularly the poker community. And real kid poker, Daniel Negreanu, who has been the face of poker over the last two decades who calls Vegas his home, will be joining us in hour number three to talk a little politics, talk about Andrew Yang. But first, I want to get to the New Hampshire primary. And as I mentioned, Andrew Yang backed out. We'll get to the losers in a second, but let's first talk positive here. Let's talk about the winners. And the winners, clearly, Bernie Sanders and Pete Buttigieg, but a woman, if you had asked me a month ago, if Amy Klobuchar in the New Hampshire primary would not only defeat people like Joe Biden and Elizabeth Warren, but destroy them, I would have said you were crazy. Elizabeth Warren had a heck of a good night last night I'm sorry, not Elizabeth Warren, uh, Amy Klobuchar, had a heck of a good night last night. She did really well, and she came in third, and like I said, she destroyed Joe Biden and Elizabeth Warren. So if you ask me who the true winner is last night, it's certainly Klobuchar. Yes, Bernie Sanders won. That was expected. Pete Buttigieg had a really good night because he he narrowly lost to Bernie Sanders. So Pete Buttigieg had a really good night. When you look at what uh, took place with Pete Buttigieg, in the last few weeks, he's had he's had a really good few weeks. There's there's absolutely no question about that. Even though he failed to pull off the big surprise, he was very close. And uh, we're talking like two percentage points here. Klobuchar finished fifth in Iowa, and suddenly, you know, now she 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 finishes third yesterday. Big win for her. And of course, Mayor Mike Bloomberg, with all the money that he has, it shouldn't be a surprise to anyone that he's really. It's really paying off in the national polls. So those are the winners right now. My personal opinion hasn't changed. I've I've said it all along. I think it's going to come down to three people, Bernie Sanders, Pete Buttigieg, and Bloomberg. And it certainly appears that way right now. But let's talk a little bit about the losers because isn't that more fun to talk about the losers? Let's talk about that. that. Let's let's, let's talk about that. Let's start with Joe Biden. Um, So Joe Biden had a dismal night. 
In fact, his night was so bad that he left earlier in the day, which is which is crazy. It, it, it's absolutely nuts to me. So the former vice president abandoned, you know, his volunteers. He abandoned all those that are working hard for him. I thought that was wrong. I thought it was inappropriate, and I think it showed a lack of leadership. So what does he do? Again, he, he he's behind Klobuchar. He's behind Elizabeth Warren. He had a horrible night, just as he did in Iowa. So what does Joe Biden decide to do? He decides to fly out to South Carolina after finishing fifth in New Hampshire. But again, he flew out early yesterday morning. Have a listen to this. Tonight, though, I, we just heard from the first two of 50 states, two of them, not all the nation, not half the nation, not a quarter of the nation, not 10 percent, two, two. Now, where I come from, that's the opening bell, not the closing bell. And uh, the fight to end Donald Trump's presidency is just beginning, just beginning. All right, well, to me, it sounds like okay, Joe. those are a bunch of excuses. I like his arithmetic, though. One plus one equals two. That's very solid. Well, to me, this is just a complete excuse for what has taken place with Joe Biden over the course of the last several weeks. This is extremely disappointing. Now, he's not going to say that publicly, but it appears to me, and it might be too early to say this, but I'm going to say it anyway, Joe Biden is not going to win. He is not going to be the guy on that stage standing next to Donald Trump. And some again, some people might say it's way too early, Brian, for you to say that. These polls are shocking. Now, I've said it for the last several months. I mean, are, are, I've said it for the last several months, and I'll say it again. I am not a Joe Biden supporter. I didn't want to vote for Joe Biden, and there's a lot of different reasons. But this is a perfect example, J.D., of why I don't like Joe Biden. Here he is, you know, in, in New Hampshire— the polls are not over yet. Now, obviously, all of his advisors and people are telling him he's going to get his ass kicked, and that's fine. The fact that he abandons Save everybody. Save yourself the embarrassment. Well, the fact that he abandons everybody and doesn't face the music. I'm going to tell you something about Bernie Sanders. He wouldn't have done that. Pete Buttigieg wouldn't have done that. Amy Klobuchar wouldn't have done that. I don't even think Bloomberg would have done that. But the fact that you know, he just as, as leaves. The, as, as the perceived front runner for as long as Joe Biden was. I mean, keep in mind, this entire, Trump's entire impeachment was predicated on the assumption that Joe Biden was his absolute guaranteed opponent in the 2020 presidential election. I mean, this guy has had a lot of hype behind him becoming the Democratic candidate in 2022 to the degree that an entire impeachment inquiry was based on him. Well, to me, this has nothing to do with, uh, you know, the impeachment stuff, and it has nothing to do with uh, Hunter Biden and everything. It just has everything to do with the fact the guy is not showing leadership. You have to stay in New Hampshire and face the music. He didn't do that. He decided to fly to South Carolina. And, and here's somebody else who I think is is, is waving the, the white towels or the white flag, so to speak. Um, that would be Elizabeth Warren. She actually defeated Joe Biden yesterday. Uh, she came in hey, fourth. You're good for her. But, you know, if you told me Amy Klobuchar, Amy Klobuchar would be ahead of her a month ago in New Hampshire, I would I would have called you crazy. But that's exactly what's happening here. So I want you to really listen to these words of Elizabeth Warren, because these words to me sound like a woman who is defeated. Have a listen to what Elizabeth Warren had to say last night in New Hampshire. But the fight between factions in our party has taken a sharp turn in recent weeks with ads mocking other candidates and with supporters of some candidates shouting curses at other Democratic candidates. These harsh tactics might work if you are willing to burn down the rest of the party in order to be the last man standing. They might work if you don't worry about leaving our party and our politics worse off than how you found it. And they might work if you think only you have all the answers and only you are the solution to all our problems. Okay, so when I hear that stuff, and by the way, she said a lot more than just that. She talked for about 10 minutes about bringing the Democratic Party together together. Now, I've been doing this for quite some time now. Uh, I'm not a, uh, a professional when it comes to covering politics, but I have been watching and following it for a very long time. When I hear somebody make a speech like that and they're talking about bringing the party together and they're talking about all these things in general terms, it usually means one thing. They're defeated. They know they're not going to win. And I'm telling you right now, Elizabeth Warren is going to be out of the race probably within a month. It is the classic case of if you can't beat them, join them. Well, and, and Elizabeth Warren, 
ironically, is the one that kind of started the mudsling when she attacked Pete Buttigieg for having that big billion all, b- b- billionaire crystal cave wine tasting. She, I mean, she's attacked a lot of. She attacked Bernie Sanders. She basically, basically said he was a sexist and that he said that a woman couldn't, you know, couldn't be president of the United States. And now she's the one after attacking two other candidates who is now recommending that everybody work together and no more mudslinging takes place. Yeah, she is absolutely defeated, and I I think that she's probably gone in in, in less than a couple of weeks. So if I'm running the Democratic Party right now, here's what I make of all this. It's pretty simple. Here's what I make of it. First of all, middle-of-the-road voters like myself, people that are undecided, people that are independents, Now, I don't like Amy Klobuchar very much, but it's clear to me that many people do. And the reason why people like Klobuchar and she's doing well in the polls right now is because she is a moderate Democrat. She's not extreme. Same thing with Pete Buttigieg. He is a moderate Democrat. He is not an extreme liberal. Neither is Klobuchar. I think a lot of people in this country, including maybe some Republicans, are drawn to people like that. The reason why Bernie Sanders is doing so well is very simple. Anybody under the age of 25 seems to seems to want to vote for Bernie Sanders. He's doing very well with young people. The, the polls under 30 in New Hampshire were astounding. Well, yeah, I mean, socialism, pretty much everybody. Socialism among millennials is rising, Brian. And, well, if, and if Bernie Sanders gets the domination, I'm telling you, the Democratic Party, I truly believe this, it is done. No, I disagree. It is done. I disagree. Here's why. AOC, Bernie no, Sanders. I disagree. The millennials across the United States. I disagree. Here's why. The Democratic Party and those that are running the Democratic Party do not want ben- Bernie Sanders to be their candidate. They do not want a socialist candidate. Um, yes, I understand that many young people are voting for Bernie Sanders, but trust me, and maybe I'm wrong on this one, I think that those in the party, the powerful ones in the party, are going to do the same thing they did to him in 2016. I don't think there's any chance that he's going to be the guy. I really don't. And, um, and you don't think there will be any type of backlash between Sanders and the Democratic Party, well, I mean, the, divide, was, dividing the party if that if that takes place yet again, there was which, will, which will only strengthen Trump? Did it hurt the party? Per usual. Did it hurt the party in 2016? I would say that it did, yes. Well, I, I mean, mean look, you know, Donald Trump is the president of the United States. It certainly didn't help the party. Yeah, but that's not why. The reason why Hillary Clinton lost to Donald Trump, it's pretty clear to me. Uh, and by the way, she did get the popular vote by a couple million votes, so it's not like she got destroyed. Do you think Bernie Sanders would have beaten well, Donald on. Trump at let, 16? Oh, let, let, me just, let me just finish my thought here. The reason why Hillary lost because she didn't do a good job campaigning. She didn't go into those battleground states. She uh, thought she had it in the bag. Right. That was, to me, that's the, now there's other reasons too, but to me that is the main reason. She didn't do a good job campaigning. I don't think she was a great candidate. I certainly didn't vote for her. I think that was another issue. Uh, Donald Trump, you know, he went into those places that he needed to go to. He, the bottom line is he just campaigned better. He did a better job campaigning. Um, he did a better job marketing. Well, yeah. I mean, you could, you could put that across the board. Um, so whoever wins in the Democratic Party, whoever it is that is facing Donald Trump, they have to do the opposite of what Hillary Clinton did. You have to go into those battleground states. I, for one, am still a little surprised, J.D., that Joe Biden is struggling as much as he is, but he's had a lot of gaffes. Uh, I think I think he, the way he talks to people at times, he's not great. At t- as he's gotten older, he's changed a little bit. I had a lot more respect for Joe Biden ten years I mean, ago than Brian, I do now. Brian, he called a woman a lying, dog-faced pony soldier. Well, so a couple days ago, I don't agree with that, and I criticized him for he's it. He's probably going to call someone a jive turkey very soon. That's we're probably going to hear that out of his mouth. I don't agree with that. And we talked about that on the show. With that being said, Donald Trump says worse things than that on a daily basis. So I don't think that's a reason for not winning. I, I really don't. Donald Trump says worse things than that about people on a daily basis. I don't think that Joe Biden has the mental acuity necessary to win the presidential election, much less lead the country. And I think the, the rest of the country is starting to figure that out. And I've been saying this for a long time. Back when Avenatti was on our show, we consistently asked him, Every single week, and he kept supporting Joe Biden. I kept saying, I'm not sure Joe Biden has it all upstairs. This is why Kamala Harris should have stayed in the race. Because I give Amy Klobuchar a lot of credit here because she could have dropped out weeks, month ago. She didn't do that. Kamala Harris decided to drop out. Listen, stranger things have happened. Harris could have been in Klobuchar's spot right now. Easily, I could have seen that happen. So let this be a lesson to some of the Democrats out there. Now, listen. Uh, is, is Tulsi Gabbard still in this, by the way? Well, yeah, you, she's still getting votes, but she's she, she, obviously she's not campaigning. She's not doing well. We'll talk about her in a little bit. Okay, uh, good. But uh, listen, Yang dropped out. Everybody expected that to happen. 
I think he brought some new blood into the Democratic Party. I think he's a smart guy, and I think he has a, a great future in politics. I really do. But who is going to be the next person to drop out? Well, if you asked me, it's got to be Tom Steyer. So he made some interesting comments last night in his speech, made it sound like he's dropping out, but nothing official from his campaign yet. I think Steyer has to be the next guy that's most likely going to drop out. And then I think we're going to see a domino effect in the next several weeks after Nevada, after the debate here. Would not surprise me if Warren is the next person to drop out. Joe Biden's going to wait till the very last second to drop out. It's way too early to make that uh, distinction now and say exactly when Joe Biden, you know, look, Joe Biden can still win. I just don't think that's going to happen. I seriously don't. Well, the Nevada caucus is February 22nd. Yeah, so that's coming up very soon. And obviously all these candidates that are still in the race are going to be here in Las Vegas debating, campaigning. Also important to note, Michael Bennett dropped out too. I don't even know who the hell that guy is. I think so. he plays defensive end for the uh, Eagles, Patriots, isn't Cowboys. That, isn't that the guy who got in a little bit of uh, police trouble in Las Vegas a couple years ago? he <laughs> did fire a gun off at Dre's. <laughs> anyway, Michael Bennett is out of the race and Yang are out. Uh, Tom Steyer is going to be the next one to leave. Um, but this is turning into a very interesting situation. Clear to me that those that are the higher-ups in the Democratic Party do not want Bernie Sanders to be their guy. They just don't. And I've been saying it all along, my support. I think I speak for a lot of middle America right now. I really do. People want a moderate in there. People want somebody closer to the center. And Pete Buttigieg and Amy Klobuchar are exactly that. They are exactly that. Well, they don't have extreme I, views. I, I think it helps that you know Amy Klobuchar, she's running on decency. How Donald Trump is such an indecent human being. And, and she's also a reasonable woman. I think people want a reasonable woman up there, and that's why Amy Klobuchar has the type of, you know, she's getting the type of push that she's getting right now because Elizabeth Warren is perceived as pretty unreasonable with her policies. Amy Klobuchar is not. Well, the problem with Warren, and I've said this all along, at least she doesn't, she doesn't sound like she's a very genuine person. Uh, with the whole uh, idea of where her descent came well, from. Well, she's a politician. And, and yeah, but not all politicians are like that. Um, I don't like that. I think Klobuchar's tough. You know, she's tough the way she treats her employees, eating combs with salads and then making her uh, making her interns clean them. But she's tough. They did. She definitely made her staffers eat salads with no, combs, with hair combs. No, she did not make her staffers eat salads with combs. That's not the story. The story is is that she ate a salad with a comb because she didn't have a fork and she made one of her staffers clean the comb and just demeaning stuff. And and she actually, uh, uh, I guess you could say admitted to that. So those are the stories that came out. She's not a, a very easy person to work with. She hazes her staff. Yeah. Why wouldn't you just eat a salad with your hands? I, like, I don't understand that. She doesn't want to get her hands Wait, dirty. Do you think she wash your hands after college? I don't know. All I know is she, that's not the. Can you picture Pete Buttigieg doing that? Like, imagine Mayor Pete in his plane with his husband. Can you imagine like he's he's eating a salad and 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 his he's, he looks over at his husband and says, "I don't have a fork. Get me your comb." Like <laughs> Pete Buttigieg would never do something like that. Yeah. He yeah. just wouldn't. I don't know. That that kind of rubbed me the or wrong way. Or eating pudding. I don't have a spoon. Take off your sock. Let me use your sock as a spoon. Well, there's no evidence of that, so I'm, I'm not going to accuse her of doing that. There's no evidence I can of that. appreciate that. No. But when I heard that comb story and she admitted to it, I said, this is not the kind of person I want to be the president of the United States. Right then and there, I said, I'm not going to support her. She's, you know, she sounded like she was kind of a, you know, B-word. Do you think that's visceral? I don't know. On your behalf? I don't know. Here's what I do know. My guy, Buttigieg, is doing very well in the polls. Klobuchar is doing very well. There's a reason for that. And I keep talking about that on this show over and over and over again. If you are on the extreme right or you on the extreme left, you don't represent what this country is all about. Because when you're that extreme, it's going to be hard for you to work with others on the other side. When you're not willing to work with Democrats or Republicans, vice versa. You can, it's, it makes things very difficult on yourself when you're an extremist, so to speak. You know, when people on the far right, their stance on abortion, for example. Many reasonable Republicans feel like there are extenuating circumstances, the health of the mother. Maybe incest or rape. Listen, even Donald Trump has that stance. He thinks there are extenuating circumstances. Yes, I agree with that. There, there better be. But there are some extremists on the right 
that say, nope, doesn't matter whether your daughter is raped. You're going to be forced to have that child. Government's going to tell you you have to be forced to have that child. That's an extreme view, and that's a view that even many people on the right don't agree with. How about views on the left? Bernie Sanders, and I understand he's doing very, very well. But he's not going to be – I'm sorry. He's just – I can't imagine he's going to be up on there on that stage with Donald Trump because he wants $15 an hour minimum wage. He wants college free for all. Those are extreme views that many of the other Democrats are not talking about. That is an extreme view. Point being, if you're one of those extremists on the far left or the far right, I think it hurts your chances to win. It hurts your chances – to win in these primaries. Now, I understand that Bernie Sanders won in New Hampshire. Not surprising. Let's see how he does in Nevada. I will be surprised if he wins in Nevada. I really will. I will be surprised. So you think who is going to win Nevada? Pete Buttigieg? I tell you, that's a tough one, but I do think that, yeah, Klobuchar and Buttigieg have all the momentum right now. I think Buttigieg is going to win Nevada. I really do. And I think Joe Biden is going to have a much better showing in Nevada. I wouldn't be surprised if Joe Biden finished second or third. I do. I think I, I think he's going to have a better showing. It's going to be an interesting week. I have to wait and find out and see what happens. But coming up next, Tulsi Gabbard has been saying some some weird things over the course of the last couple of days. It has something to do with prostitution, and it has something to do with heroin. That's right. She made an appearance on the Sean Hannity show. We have the audio for you, and it is the reason why I'm going to tell you right now, Tulsi Gabbard will never be a good politician, and we're going to play the audio That's going to tell you exactly why coming up next. So we're going to talk about her. we got Sam Peters, uh, Republican running for Congress, Nevada District 4. He's going to be joining us in hour number two. Plenty of other stuff to get to, including the attorney of the Major League Baseball pitcher who is suing the Houston Astros in hour number three, and Daniel Negreanu. We'll get to all that coming up next. You're listening to The Vegas Take on the all-new 101.5 FM, 720 AM, KDOM.